Bob, it is uh, is Little Rock week. Everything felt weird last year, but it must that was uh that was the one year since 1948 that Arkansas has not played a game at uh, at War Memorial Stadium. So uh, I guess back to the routine and uh you know, what is the um what is the sports writer's perspective or your perspective on the games in, in Little Rock? Fans have their own perspective. You know, they usually chalk it up to the facilities. They'll chalk it up to the opponent. Uh, the press facilities are okay. You know, you guys really aren't supposed to care too much about the opponent. The travel, that's another thing. Mm-hmm. What's your perspective on games in Little Rock? Well, I mean, obviously Arkansas has played there going back to the 40s, and really that's, how uh, that was a big key to Arkansas to become a statewide program. Um, I guess it was John Barnhill's time that recognized, uh, you know, the need to play in, in the center part of the state. Also, the, the uh, population dynamic was far different then than it is now. I mean, uh, Fayetteville was a pretty sleepy college town. I don't know. I couldn't tell you what the population was in the 50s or 60s. I can tell you it's grown a whole lot since the 80s when, when I first moved here. And, um, you know, it's it, 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 there's still I, I think there's more people in, in uh, the Little Rock metropolitan area than there is in Northwest, but the two big population areas of the state. When I first moved here, I was surprised at how small Razorback Stadium was. It only sat like forty seven thousand, and really the big games were played in Little Rock, kind of like Alabama played its big games in Birmingham. Mm. So the stadium was so much bigger. Things have changed, but. Um, I still think it's important to have a presence in central Arkansas. You might say, well, it's only, you know, a three-hour drive from, from Little Rock to Fable Mound. You've got a, a, an interstate as opposed to all these windy roads and stuff. But, um, you know, in the southern and eastern part it might, of the state, it might be a, you know, a six-hour drive to Fable or something. So I think it's still good to play uh, games in Little Rock, and, and especially a game like this where you're playing UAPB, which is, you know, from in the central Arkansas area. And, and I'm sure there are a lot of alums and fans. I, I, was, yeah. I, I was always surprised when I first moved to Arkansas at, you know, that they played as many games in, in Little Rock as they did then, you know, and that was still, you know, when the great stadium debate was going on. And it's pretty obvious to me now like who won the great stadium debate. And even the folks in Little Rock and in central Arkansas that try to, you know, uh, defend their home turf, so to speak. You know, they reach for the nostalgia. They reach for the idea that there's still boosters out of central Arkansas that care about having games there. Even those people are now resigned to the thought that, you know, maybe when this contract is over, you they may not be playing in Little Rock anymore. Like, the great stadium debate, I don't mean to kick off the great stadium debate because it's over, right? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, if you compare the two stadiums, all due respect, I mean, they've made some nice updates to War Memorial Stadium. Oh, that was part of the deal. For it's going to continue to play there. They had to upgrade the locker room and you know do some things with the press box and uh, you know probably get it more uh, uh, friendly, uh, internet friendly, you know, for fans and stuff and media. But um, you know, obviously, Arkansas poured millions and millions of dollars into this team in favor, and they want to reap the financial benefits of that. I mean, you have all the sky boxes, and you know. Um, if this game had been part of the season ticket package, I assume there'd be, I don't know how many people would show up, but there'd be 50,000 plus tickets sold, I guess, as oh, from what I understand, there's about 40,000 tickets sold. There might, there might be a big, uh, you know, walk-up sale on Saturday. People might wait to decide what to do. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's no comparison. I already saw, you know, the state of Fayetteville is much, is much bigger, much better. That's just a fact. Um, but that doesn't mean it doesn't make sense to play a game in Little Rock, you know, every once in a while. It's obviously they're not going to play two or three games a year. They're like they used to might play a game every three or four years or something. But I think playing this game makes sense because your sites are going to draw 75,000 people. I don't think it's an FCS game, whether it's PB or anybody else. You know, the Arkansas State game in 2025, I, I'm sure if that's not a sellout, <laughs> they just, I need to play any more games there, but mm. I assume that'll be a sellout. So I don't think playing SEC games there is a good idea, but I think you can play a non-conference game every once in a while, you know, a game that makes sense. And if people in Central Arkansas feel like, well, we want to see, you know, SEC games, well, that, that's just not in the cards anymore. And, and honestly, I can't remember what year it was, but I just saw played Georgia there, oh, I don't know, eight or ten years ago and, and didn't sell out. And you're thinking, well, if you can't sell out Georgia, then, you know, there, there's an issue there. 
Yeah, there is. But, um, one of the main debates and reasons why I've, I've heard a lot of Razorback fans of not wanting this game in Little Rock is because it gives up that home, an extra home game in Fayetteville and it hurts recruiting. You know, you can't even, since it's quote-unquote at a neutral site, you can't even talk to recruits. What if going forward, say, especially if they keep this in-state kind of tradition going with War Memorial, you tell Arkansas State, you tell UAPB, you tell Central Arkansas, you tell them, all right, y'all have everything to gain from playing us, right? Like, you know, of course we want to be be good neighbors. We want to do what's best for the natural state. But since y'all have everything to gain, why don't you basically tell them, if you want to play this game and you want to play it at War Memorial, then it's got to count for your home game. And do you think that a state would, would go for that? Do you think UAPB would go for that? If, if you kind of flipped the script and said, we'll play it, we'll play it here, but it's your home game and we still get to keep our extra game on the hill. Well, yeah, the thing is, Arkansas is not playing those teams home and home, you mm. know? So I don't know that it really matters who's the court designated home to. I remember a few years ago or several years ago, I think it was Louisiana Monroe, you know, that they had to have a certain uh, average attendance to, to maintain their Division One status. And so I just worked out a deal where they played ULM like, I don't know, three times in a four-year span or five-year span. And they actually, ULM was officially the home team, so they could count the attendance. But mm-hmm. Arkansas you know, was the home team in every other way with the locker room, the money, and all that. But, yeah, I mean, the thing is, Arkansas is not playing UAPB home and home, so it really doesn't matter to me who the designated home team is. Um, and in that regard, it's not like, you know, they're returning the game. So I don't know if that, I don't, think that really would figure into it. Um, you know, and Arkansas has got a complicated deal because, you know, they, they got a home game in Arlington, Texas. They've got a home game in Little Rock. But I think they still have seven games in Fayetteville. If I got that right, I think. Six or seven. And so that, the, the Arlington contract's going to run out in 2024. The Arkansas, I don't think, plays in Little Rock before 2025 again unless I'm missing something. So, um, you know, that, 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 that A&M series is going to go – Campus home at home after 2024. That will make it a little less complicated for Arkansas. You know, one year that will be a home game in favor. One year it will be a road game at uh, College Station. But, um, yeah, I'd say I, I think it can make sense for Arkansas to play uh, Pine Bluff, UCA, ASU. Um, you know, maybe somebody like Louisiana Monroe or whoever, um, you know, they might have for an extra non-conference game, you know, like like for this, like the, the Georgia 7 game this year or something like that. But um, then they come a time where they said I'm playing Little Rock. I mean, Alabama didn't play in Birmingham anymore. Ole Miss, Mississippi State, they're playing Jackson. Um, you know, I mean, I'd say that the population dynamics have changed. I, I think in another 20 years, our uh, North is going to have over a million people, mm-hmm. you know. So, um, and I don't think people would, uh, obviously, if you're in Little Rock or Conway or something, it's easier to go to War Memorial, but I don't think people would want to come up to the stadium here and kind of have that game day experience, get on campus. So that's another aspect of this is, you know, Arkansas wants people to get on their campus. They want, you know, high school kids or younger kids to get on campus and say, oh, this is really nice. I want to go to school here. Of course, and the flip, of that, flip side of that is you want Razorback fans in North in uh, Central Arkansas who want to come up to go to school, too, and obviously playing the game there promotes the school. But um, I don't see why I can't play a game in Little Rock, you know, every couple, three years, uh, but just not, you know, an SEC game and not, not a marquee non Mm-hmm. Well, obviously, you know, last game before the bye week, you know, coming off of a three-game a losing streak, and this is a big hypothetical because obviously nobody really knows the answer. But do you think Arkansas would be sitting at four and three if, say, they had gotten the bye week earlier into the season than waiting after eight games? It's possible. Um, you know, Auburn hadn't had a bye week. Um, they're finally getting a bye week this week, but it, it, it's possible. It, it's hard to say. Um, you know, sometimes like after the Texas game, you have a big win like that, or after A&M, you want to keep playing because you feel like you got momentum. After, you know, what happened to them at Georgia, maybe they could be used to bye week. But, um, you know, I think a bye week's ideally maybe halfway through the season, maybe after 
six games or something on the Lane Kiffin. They had a bye week. I think they played three games in that bye week for Alabama. Mm-hmm. So that was that was too early. Even though I assume you'd like to have extra time to prepare for Alabama, it didn't really help Mississippi State had an open date for Alabama. Mm-hmm. So it didn't really help the Mississippi School. So I think ideally you're setting up a a schedule you'd like to have. You know, play maybe play six games, have a bye week, play six games, but. It, it, it's hard to say, um, but obviously Arkansas is banged up, and uh, this is a game, let's be realistic, this is a game Arkansas had to win big, and um, if you're Arkansas ideally, you play your starters, you know, a few series, and then you get a lot of snaps for your backups. I mean, it's always going to go that way, but, um, you know, maybe it would have been better if they could have played a game like this, and not have a bye week necessarily, but, but, but maybe played this game early, earlier in the season. To me, what this is an opportunity to do is just to stop a losing streak. And it's it's so interesting and sometimes even funny to listen to the redirection of the questions that come. And, you know, even even Chuck last night on the radio show tried to ask it in, in a different way and I think in a more respectful way to the opponent. But, I mean, the the fact of the matter is this game this game needs to be in hand within the first quarter. And a lot of guys need some rest. I mean, for, for a team that... The coach Pittman talks about how much they're beat up right now, and some of it might be nicks and bruises. Some of them are real injuries as well. I think they want to get their guys some rest. It might be about development in some cases, but I think they need the, they want their dudes to just not get hurt and not have to play more than about a quarter or so. Well, yeah, you just take the quarterback position, for instance. You know, K.J. Jefferson, I mean, all quarterbacks, you know, get hit. But if you're a running quarterback like he is, you just hit a lot. I mean, it's like, you know, Corral carried 30 times last week against Tennessee, which blew my mind. But, yeah, you know, you'd like to um, have, um, you know, the offense look good in the first quarter, get a good lead. And then, you know, Malik Hornsby's actually gotten play quite a bit for a backup, um, whether games have been out, out of hand or, or the same M game he had to go in when KJ got hurt, uh, had to miss a couple series. But, He'd like to get Hornsby some snaps. I think John Stephen Jones or third team quarterback some snaps. He'd like a running back like Josh Ogles, you know, a track guy. Um, you know, um, and I know that they have young backs, but you'd like to maybe give a guy like Josh some snaps. You'd like to um, play the younger guys. You know, you feel like, no offense to the ATU, you'd feel like, you know, if you're on an SEC team, you're on scholarship, then I think those backups should be able to go in there and get the job done. So, yeah, ideally, Every time takes care of business, gets a big lead early, and and gives their backup some valuable work, rest their starters, and um, you know, and these other guys, the young guys, get, get some good experience. Bob, appreciate you, man. Always good talking. Thank you, and um, we'll uh, talk next week. Even in a bye week, we can still pull it off. Got a lot of basketball to get to. Okay, you guys take care. Thanks, John, Bob. It's Bob Holt, Democrat Gazette. There's. You get your two deep, right? You got your two deep roster for this football. You, I feel like you might need like a four or a five deep, something like that, because I don't know how much those two uh, will be in there uh, after the first, second quarter. Halftime is brought to you by Crabtree RV Center in Alma. That's the RV dealership that served you for over 70 years and 17-acre, 26,000-square-foot showroom floor. That's Crabtree RV Center. Easiest place in the state to find it as well, right there at the junction of I-40 and I-49 beside the Cracker Barrel. Crabtree RV Center gives every family the best experience choosing the right RV. Fix you up with the parts department, service department as well. And they've been taking care of you for over 70 years and four generations. CrabtreeRV.com for the inventory. First hour halftime to wrap up after We're back and better than ever. A new web interface to start the basketball season and more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all basketball and football action this season. Head to the new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code BELIEVE50 to receive your bonus. That's B L E A V 50 to receive your bonus. From basketball, football, and baseball postseason, NHL, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet Online, where the game starts.